Greetings, this presentation is going to be a visual demonstration and a scriptural representation of the, the glory of God, the Gospel and the Trinity and it's going to incorporate the plan of salvation that were revealed in the Holy Bible in the Word of God um, it's May the 1st today um, still still in lockdown from the COVID-19 virus um, it looks like the peak of the uh, severity of it is past so hopefully God willing it's uh, it will ab uh, abate now and uh, decline um, I've kind of kept my head down and uh, kept away from the media just kept my focus off of the problems going on and trusted in the Lord so um, I'm making this video just as a an outreach to anyone in the world who wants to know the truth to know the purpose of life to know the gospel to know the only true and living God and I'm going to demonstrate the wisdom that how the word is true, how it's faithful, how God is free, three persons in one purpose and his purpose is uh, love and glory. I'd like to try and in my weakness demonstrate with this uh, crude analogy because God is spiritual. He's a, I'm going to use three pins to demonstrate the uh, advent of Christ and the role, the role of the triune God and his nature as it's been revealed in the word, his purpose and heart, which is incorporated in the plan of salvation, the purpose of life. Now God is holy and the wisdom in, in, in the number three, we'll try and demonstrate in the, in the value, the value of the spiritual nature and love of one, of one heart, one purpose, one will, one God and how that is um, according to the word in three persons the Father the Word and the Holy Spirit now the Father is spirit and holy and pure and the Word who is Jesus Christ is spirit but a resurrected body because of his advent and taken on the flesh to be sin, the sin of the world to redeem mankind unto himself to draw all men unto himself and the Holy Spirit is spirit and how they are one in purpose but free in nature, free in persons but one God, not one God playing three roles but three different personalities in, in the triune Godhead and Jesus Christ came in the fullness, the full authority of God the Father, God the Holy Spirit and himself the word of God to glorify the Father now for the only way there's only one way that God in, in his purpose in bringing, bringing life into creation because God is life God is eternal life he's now he's always not a time where God has not existed and there's not a time where he will cease to exist he's forever he's constant and for God, in his wisdom, there can only be three. There only needs to be three. There can't be one, there has to be three. And for anything that he creates outside of himself from the one, it cannot know God because it's not holy, it's not eternal, because it's created, so it's been given a beginning. So God has to find a way there's only one way that God can allow free choice, free agency for his created being, his created beings to have to have free will, to be free, to not be controlled, not be um, puppets, not to be dominated by God, but to give them a choice 
they cannot be uh, made to um, do what God wants them to do. God, in his wisdom, has given uh, mankind the freedom to choose, because that's right, that's the only way. It's Otherwise it's um, an, an unrighteous uh, dominion over his creatures, he's not, he's not like that. So he's love, he's, he's just, he's fair. But because of his created, because of creation and, and the human race being created, it's outside the knowledge and existence of eternity, so it's born outside the will and knowledge knowing God. So because of the fall revealed in the word, the fall of mankind, which was disobedience to God's will, uh, then upon the conscious of man entered sin. So sin entered into the world. And that separated the, the first man and the, the first woman taken, created by the one and then the woman create, taken from the one man, the one flesh to become two, two in one, sinned and fell and lost the grace of God. So the human race from that day forward, from that seed, from that, that sinful act, lost the fellowship and knowledge of God, the presence of God walking among Man, man, mankind, Adam and Eve, his creation. So, all creation is born lost to the to the knowledge of God in sin. That's why the world decays because it's separated from the harmony and the grace of Jehovah, of of the Triune God, of His sovereign power. So, because of sin. Uh, the devil has dominion and, and, and the devil is the absence of love. So we've got this um, adversity in, the, in existence against that which is good. And so sin entered the world and mankind right up until the present day is lost and outside the knowledge of God. So all things created are outside the knowledge of God. It, they don't know, they cannot comprehend what it's like to be pure and holy because we're born in sin since the fall of mankind. So God in his wisdom has to bring that which is unholy into that which is holy and eternal. So how does he do that? How does he... He can't lower his standard and just make everybody believe he cannot show himself to be God because people won't appreciate, won't learn the value and holiness and love of God. So the only way was for God to enter in to a created dimension that he created, being eternal, to die, that all men would be drawn unto himself, unto the light, unto the Word, unto the Son of God, unto the Resurrection and the Life, unto the second member of the Triune Godhead, of Jesus Christ, the Word and the Lord, sent from the Father, sent his Son, who willingly came because he's love, so he lovingly and willingly gave his life to draw all men unto himself, that all may know God and be drawn into the grace and eternal life which is received today through faith in Jesus Christ. And they're born again of the Spirit. So they have the indwelling triunity, the triune nature of God because of what Jesus Christ done, because he's life, the resurrection and the life, the bread of life the Lamb of God, the Passover. So that's the only way that God can justly and wisely and fairly bring things into existence. Because God's eternal, so he creates things for eternity and gives them a choice. 
and the choice is simple to believe and receive life or to remain lost and choose sin which 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 is death which leads to death which not only leads to physical death but it will lead, lead to the eternal separation from God forever which will be eternal death which will be separation and damnation you'll be stuck stuck in hell in in suffering and torment in fire and the only way to, to receive life is through the way sent Jesus Christ to draw all men unto himself that all may be saved through faith simply through faith so um, he's given his word so there's um, ample witnesses in, in the word of God which is faithful and he's put his holy word above every name and the holy holy bible re reveals in the old testament and the new testament his plan his purpose because because of the revelation the revealing and the advent of jesus christ we have the revelation which helps all people understand the old testament covenant to the jewish people and the promise of the messiah and then the promise of the um, millennial reign in the last days of the kingdom of God on earth so the kingdom is, uh, came with Christ and today it's a spiritual kingdom you're born into the kingdom which will come which came with Christ because of his resurrection back into heaven it will come again and his victory that he received on the cross will be realised on earth at the very end which the plan of God reveals, which the word of God reveals. So the word of God revealed the heart, mind and will and purpose and the, the whole plan of salvation which I'm going to share in, in a diagram unveiled in, in a second. But the word of God, it contains the whole skeletal plan and all the meat and the bones and the skin and the blood of the full body, the full purpose of God's heart will only because of Jesus Christ revealing his word in the New Testament, in the New Covenant which is to Israel, which is to the Jew and to all the world, just like in the Old Covenant it's to the Jew that the promise of the Messiah and the promises of the Kingdom were for the Jews and the Jews were to invite the Gentiles but um, it wasn't um, wasn't focused on so uh, just like today the church has lost focus on the gospel uh, reaching out to Israel the, the gospel is for Israel and and all the world so all the world and Israel are in unbelief Israel are ungrafted and the Gentiles the non-Jewish people are in unbelief. Only the church, the believers in Christ, are uh, saved and have the knowledge of the faithfulness of, of Jesus Christ. And the Word of God reveals the whole purpose and um, reveal the skeleton of that purpose and add um, some meat onto the bone of the words of the Lord, which is the the Holy Word of God in the King James Bible is a faithful preservation of the simplicity of the whole plan and the nature of God. Right. So, um, just to uh, refute Darwinism and the wisdom in one now that now you might say well there's three there but there's only one that's one one whole complete one that's complete that's one and that's one they're all one they're all the value of one now to refute Darwinism now Darwinism teaches that 
uh, order comes from chaos. There's no intelligent designer, there's no order. Now God is orderly, he's always existed, he's not a chaotic uh, God without purpose. He's fearful, he has a purpose, hence why his uh, seriousness of the gospel and the word which is neglected, which is rejected, it should be uh, exalted in the, in, in the world, but it's on the other end of the scale. So, um, in Darwinism, they value zero, that um, creation or the, the world, the earth and the universe comes from nothing, comes from disorder, has no value, has no purpose. But life teaches that there's a purpose and every uh, zero would be the value of uh, Darwinism, zero, absolute zero, because there's no purpose, whereas a purpose is, has value, has order. And zero doesn't come before one in the scale, one, two, three. Zero only exists because of one existed before it. One gives zero meaning. Uh, one doesn't come from zero because it has no value. Only one has value. So the wisdom in the Trinity that God can't be glorified by himself because he, he has to, he can't be in, a, be in heaven, leave heaven because God is omnipotent, omnipresent and what he creates his creation can't comprehend it because God is eternal. It would it would explode. It, it God's too powerful, so God has to to be glorified in what He creates because that's His purpose. To love, to glorify, to be glorified, uh, not for Himself, but for love's sake, for glory's sake. That's His purpose. So God is love. The Father's love. The Son is love. The Holy Spirit is love. They are one, the epitome of one love. It's only one love. It's only one God. So four, it, it's too many. Four, four is too much. Three is perfect because with one, with three, God can come into creation. And then you've got a perfect triangulation of witnesses. You have the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone can receive the complete witness from eating the bread, from believing in the One, which will draw all men unto God. So, uh, so that's how God is glorified, because Jesus mercifully done the will of his Father, that the will, the will of God, love, may be glorified in his Son. So his Son selflessly became sin for all mankind. So he was doing the will of the Father, which was to love and to draw all men unto himself, that they may be saved and receive life rather than perish in, and receive hell. He died. That's the only way, and that's the wisdom. And then four wouldn't be enough because uh, three is perfect. And then you've got the f the one witness, the three in the one record of his word. So there's the fourth, three and one, one in one in three, one word, one 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 gospel, one God, one faith, one baptism. One Jerusalem, one earth, one life, one creator, one purpose, one love, and one God, and one Lord. So there's a wisdom in, in the Trinity to have three, because God can be glorified. Not to glorify himself, but to be glorified in what he creates, he brings into existence, because he's not selfish, he's selfless. And that's why Christ died fearfully, because we can share in that selflessness. We can share 
in that life and God can be glorified in the believer's life. So Christ died that all may be saved, that all may have life simply by believing. So I'm going to share some scriptures. Um, unveil the plan of salvation which I've drawn a simple diagram and go through the scriptures and I want to really reach out to any 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 Jew, any Israelite, any 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 lost person, any person in the um, religious circle, in the religious realm, in the Christ in Christianity, in Islam, in whatever whatever belief that that all is vain. The only way, the only purpose, the only way to God and salvation and forgiveness, forgiveness for our sins because we're all sinful and God is holy and if you sin you're in debt to God for that sin. That's why Christ was uh, paid the debt of our sin that we may be redeemed through his life, through his death we may have life. So I'm going to reveal that um, plan but I want to simply reach out to the um, Christi Christian church, the um, religious Christian church to sh simply uh, unveil the simple plan of salvation and the dispensations. The disp there's only one dispensation but there's many ways that God dealt with within the plan of salvation, within the dispensation, as many dispensations are within his gospel plan of salvation for mankind and there's a time period and it's all revealed in the word, it's all laid out so I'm going to just share like a blueprint of a skeleton, the backbone and, uh, and then build it up with some with some meat, with some scriptures but um, really to share the different dispensations of Christ's ministry to Israel then after the resurrection uh, the, the gospel through faith alone to receive the fullness of the, of, of, the, of the promise which is Jesus Christ which is the fullness of God the Father and the Holy Spirit indwelling in the believer to be as one one heart, one purpose, have that one love given by the merit and grace of Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection, his victory over sin and death and how that all may know God and have that love, that life within them freely, it's a free gift and it's a choice and God has given us life, none of us can uh, claim any, any credit for life and he's given us his death that we may have be saved from eternal death and receive his life. So that's the promise, that's the invitation. The Lord the Lord says, Come, come unto him and believe and be saved, repent. That's the simple gospel to repent, to turn, to seek the Lord, for you um, to humble yourself, to draw near to the Lord and to believe, to look to seek and to find and to not and believe and then that will activate what Christ has put in operation which is the rock, the firm foundation of the gospel who's given his life and taken it up again believing in him, believing in the cross, believing in the way, the truth and the life you will have a faithful witness and testimony and then you'll be saved and that's the, the simple gospel so I'll be unveiling that hoping to reach any Christian and any lost person any Jew any, anyone anyone at all going through this um, global lockdown um, I've had to just give a few thoughts on the coronavirus I, don't, um, I think the I don't think the truth about it's come out. I think there's a lot that should be considered that hasn't been considered. So there's been a lot of omission. Um, I thought the Queen's uh, speech to uh, Great Britain was a bit wooden and insincere. And there's, that I don't know, but to me there all seems to be 
um, some laying down some foundational work of some other um, machination of this uh, fallen world, the devil's world. So I, I don't know what's going on, but I pray in time, time will tell and the truth will come out about this um, bizarre, almost foreboding experience. It's sort of like a calm before, before the storm. But uh, God willing, it will um, pass us by and uh, it seems like Great Britain has taken a right thump. Well, every nation in the in the world has taken a taken a punch in the guts and, a, and, and taken a wounding. Um, and it seems that um, it's not it's, things aren't going to be the same again. So uh, I'm going to keep uh, looking up, trusting in the Lord, and and praying for. Uh, Praying for people, praying for the nation. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on to the simple plan of salvation and the uh, what the Word of God has revealed. Right. Okay, I hope you can see that. I'm going to read it out anyway. Right, it's in pencils, it's very faint. So, uh, I'm going to re re share what the Word of God reveals, the simplicity of the Gospel. Now, this is like a um, skeleton of the plan in, in, a, in a timeline, historical timeline. And what the uh, word of God reveals, we have, um, so we have eternity, we have God, forever, eternal, um, without beginning, without end. So before, and all things created come from the one, the value, the eternal one, the one, one Father, one Word, one Holy Spirit, one purpose. So, God created the earth, and this is a representation of the plan and historical timeline. So, here's the just at the very end of Eden, where God created man and woman. Adam and Eve and because of their fall came the flaming sword of fire to keep the way of eternal life so the perfect way of the human race the straight and narrow way all through consistently through time is only 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 holy only God is perfect and holy we are, because of Adam and Eve's fall, sin and death entered into the world. So, the earth in its gracious state, with God's blessing, God's presence, God's activity, God's um, advocation and uh, mediation and, and grace, helping, helping mankind sustain that perfect heavenly um, sphere, that environment, that harmonious, peaceful, gracious environment, because of sin came the conflict of that peace, so entered into, dark, darkness entered into the world, so the light was lost, so mankind was born in sin, so this is uh, through time, the fall of mankind, which is uh, from Adam's sin, and we have God's created uh, things to have free agency, to have a choice. So we're all born in sin with a with a choice to either do good, to either do right, or to either do evil. 
and we've all inherently got that evil in us and we've all inherently capable of doing good but none of us are whole none of us are perfect none of us are straight only God only the one purpose is true and straight so because of Adam's sin disobedience God blocked the way of his presence of his grace and then uh, then we had the fall then we had the flood that dark line represents a time in history where the world becomes so lost because it turned out the way and it just carried on bubbling in its sin and it become violent and it hit the ripeness of its wickedness and iniquity and people were being killed unjustly and murdered all for domination and power and so the world went to a point where God judged the world with a flood which is mirrored which that get that that time of mankind's sin will reach a peak in the future and that's when God's wrath and judgment will come upon the whole earth in Jerusalem in Israel and the whole world will be in wrath be wrath so God's plan so then God's way was lost so God in in history called his people Israel he called uh, Abraham and uh, so I want to demonstrate that in the Old Testament that the Trinity of uh, the triune nature of God was, had had been revealed the name Jesus Christ hadn't been revealed and the fullness of God's um, gracious uh, gift hadn't been revealed in Jesus Christ the to be begotten in the flesh to be the only begotten Son of God to die that all may receive the fullness the, and be um, baptised into the body of Christ into the church into the, the believers in the in the fellowship of God indwelling in their lives the, the gift of life the kingdom which will come with Christ and all the believers in the millennial reign this is what what the word of God reveals so to try and share um, a few things, scattering of things um, the law the way how God called Abraham and he taught God taught his uh, inner inner heart and purpose only to Abraham and Israel the seed the seed his seed was Isaac his son so from Abraham came the son and as a type like a shadow and type um, as there, there is throughout the Old Testament that, that all, all the shadows there's many shadows and types of Christ there's many shadows and types of the Antichrist and there's many shadows and types of the Father and the, and the Son so um, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are a type of the the Father and uh, offering his Son because God um, gave Abraham a commandment to offer up his son his only only son Isaac and he faithfully did it just like the the will and purpose of God it was in demonstrated in Abraham's heart and he offered up his son but um, God stopped him and put a ram in the thicket in place of Isaac so there's a type of Christ that the father has offered his son there's a sin offering there's a, a, a faithful offering to Abraham um, and, uh, and to, in the law it was um, to offer up a lamb as a sin offering so Abraham in faith offered up his son which is a type of the father you know amusing with the with the word with his son the Lord Jesus Christ um, you know 
how are we going to save people? You know, who, who, who's going to go and give up their life because it's the only way to draw all men unto themselves? So Abraham offering his son is a type of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is a witness of the Father and the Son and Isaac and Abraham and the truth in the scriptures revealed. So, uh, the Lord revealed his uh, heart and purpose through types and shadows to his people. Now the gospel in the Old Testament was only for the Jewish people. It was like the, a story or information for only the, the Jews, only the Hebrews, only the Israelites and they they'd become divided they from the beginning they committed adultery and lost their way like the world they've gone their own way and so the lord had a burden the word of the lord so the purpose and the, the nature of god is revealed through the word of the lord in the old testament the books of the old testament make up the word and will and burden of the lord for his people israel and his his way of life the gospel so the Old Testament dispensation was for Israel towards the coming of Christ, to come in to the, the coming of the Messiah. So the author and finisher of the word is from the Father through his word, Jesus Christ, of the whole plan. And he revealed in bits and pieces, in deep different dispensations, his purpose and will towards himself, that he may be glorified, that the Father may be glorified in his in his Son, in his word, that all may have life. And it was to the Jew first. So the Old Testament is to the Jews, towards all all the world. But in the Old Testament, it was only known among the Jews. The temple and the law was only for the Jews to practice. And anyone who joined, anyone who would become a, a convert. So the gospel is the same, in a sense, except they had the law revealed through Moses in that dispensation in, in, in Israel's um, history. And the law was that only a schoolmaster like stabilizers to keep them in mind of the one to come who was Christ. Um, so we had the law. So none of the Jews could um, keep the law perfectly because only God could keep the perfect law and holy way. So Christ who was sent from the Father, so I'm going to change him now from the from the Godhead, from, so from eternity now into creation, Jesus came in the flesh, the first advent from the eternity in heaven, and he came and John announced him. So the Lord came in the flesh, I put him white for the moment, and John testifies crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord so the author and finisher of all the word and the burden and purpose of God the Father was revealed through his prophets which is revealed in all the books and the record of Moses of Genesis and the chronicles and history of Israel their calling their deliverance from Egypt and the way revealed and the heart mind and will of God revealed in them to the by Jesus from heaven, the angel of the Lord, who was uh, manifest many times in the Old Testament of uh, being the word of God, the messenger of the Father, the messenger of Jehovah's word, because he was Jehovah's word. He had the full authority of the Father to Israel, and he led them through the wilderness and into the promised land in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem's in the bosom of history, the bosom of creation, the bosom of, of the earth. 
and it and the whole purpose of God's heart was revealed to Israel towards Jerusalem for the coming of the Messiah the King the Lord God creator of heaven and earth the one Lord and one God the Son of God the only begotten of the Father so Christ in the Old Testament in prophecy so Christ is the author of all prophecy and all prophecy includes this whole purpose so from the time of the prophecy given it will include the present time sometimes the past and all the way up to mostly the end times of the expected end of Israel and because of Israel's rejection rejection of Christ the first advent he will restore them on his second advent because of their unbelief the first time round so they they will all, all those who remain in unbelief up until that point will go into judgment with the rest of the world past that point of wrath into judgment and then Christ's advent will uh, collect them and deliver them, all those that believe. But in the uh, Old Testament prophecy given by God through his word and the Holy Spirit revealed in the prophets and in the writings will cover prophecy up until not all the books but they're all laid upon the backbone of the same purpose, the whole gospel dispensation, the one plan of life from beginning to the end to the end of uh, time the end of the earth when Christ will restore the earth back to its um, like heavenly state and uh, he will rescue Israel and Jerusalem and he will reign on the earth for a thousand years that's at the very end after his wrath um, so all prophecy will cover these areas so each will give a bit a bit more depth and detail and cover any point of the prophecy of the whole plan so we're looking at a simple um, map if you like a diagram of the whole dispensational plan the Old Testament dispensation up until Jesus entry into Jerusalem his death on the cross, his death, his uh, death into the grave, his bloody death, his sacrifice, his once and only sacrifice for all sin, and then his resurrection and returning back to the Father in heaven, the triune God. Jesus on the right hand of the Father who came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily and he's the resurrection and the life so all prophecy up until that point Christ fulfilled only Christ could live the law because like the scriptures say like the gospels teach that Jesus called out all the religious Jews because they were serving their own righteousness and they weren't believing through faith alone in the righteous one only Christ could live the law and he lived the law perfectly he sharpened the law so it convicted all mankind of sin and it glorified the father because it's true he's the truth so the way that was sent came make John cried make straight the way of the Lord and then he witnessed the Lamb of God and the Father said, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Believe in him. And Jesus declared his, glorified the Father, done the miracles of the Father by the power of God the Father, his power and the power of the Holy Ghost. He laid his life down, he took his life up by the power of the triune Godhead because he came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Christ fulfilled all the prophecies and then because of his victory on the cross, his sinless death and his victory over death and his resurrection appearing unto many people 
and his faithful who died, his apostles who died as a witness of his resurrection and his faithful promise and his truth and his glory, the glory of the Father as he was in the beginning as he's always been eternally with the Father in the beginning glorified and he'd, and he'd done it on earth so he's glorified his Father's will on earth and that glory and victory will be realised in the future prophecies which he has completed but they've not come to pass but they will come to pass because God is faithful he's already been certain the first time and he's faithful about his eternal existence he's true he's revealed his trueness he's shown himself approved and he offers his faithful victory he's revealed his tri the triune nature in the scriptures so I'm going to use the last part just to simply share the, um, the gospel that the there's no need for uh, religion there's no need for organized church groups and people who um, lawyers and pharisees and all people that hedge up the way uh, the only way is Christ Christ is the rock and laying down his life he's established the foundation forever once and forever and to be safe to be placed on the rock to believe to receive the free gift of eternal life to know the love of God for you that he paid selflessly without um, boasting without um, looking for credit he, he just done it willingly to glorify the father to glorify love that all may know that love and have that love within them and through faith alone in him alone in in the love and mercy and the, and the resurrection and life of Jesus Christ you may be established upon that rock and placed upon that rock and you'll be saved and that's a simple gospel you don't need religion you don't need um, all these um, gurus and mediators there's only one mediator one advocate between God the Father and mankind and that's that's Jesus Christ the man the Lord and God and Saviour sent from God to Saviour and Jesus come to do the Father's Saviour's will and he is the Saviour and the resurrection the Lord and God in and with the Father and the Holy Ghost is that faithful witness and that can be received so religion is redundant the Jews don't need the temple because the you know the oil, the eternal oil, the everlasting water has been given and it's just free to graciously receive through faith alone and that removes all the hedge that hedge that takes all the turnstiles away, all the racketeering around, around religion you simply need faith alone in Jesus, Jesus Christ and to believe, to seek the Lord humbly have mercy on me Lord I'm a sinner and receive, believe through faith his salvation believing in God in faith, through faith in his son with all your heart to be forgiven of your sins and to be washed and to know God and know the love of God that's simply the gospel to the Jew first and to all, all the world so it's to Israel today and Christianity is um, much has been done bad bad has been done done in the name of Jesus Christ and the word of God reveals the culprits the, the, the Lord reveals the truth to any, any, any soul that seeks him he died to save all sinners uh, irrespective of sin he died to save sinners that all may be saved and redeemed Israel Jew and the Gentile that all may know the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob all may know Israel's God and about the King of Israel the Son of God Jesus Christ who will come at the end he will come for his body of Christ because um, Israel is a body and almost a type of the body of Christ because uh, if you think of um, 
Judah is the head, Israel is the body. The head is separate, it's divided, it's separate from the rest of the body. Uh, Christ has restored the body in his body, in his one body. So the church is one body of believers, Jew and Gentile. And neither are Jew or Gentile, they are one in Christ Jesus. And through faith, they can, you can be completed by his loving grace. And that can be received. Jesus taught you must be born again. You've got to enter into the straight and narrow way. That's simply through faith and believing, seeking, knocking, and the Lord will open. And that's to the Jew and, and to all the world. And that's the simple simpleness of, of Christ, of the rock. So in the dispensational time period, Christ's ministry, ministry started at his baptism, which is about there. And it continued up until his cross in within Israel in Jerusalem, which happened there. Then his resurrection. Then he co then he called his um, apostles, his, his uh, twelve disciples, and then Paul. After the gospel went out of Jerusalem to the through time into all the world, round the whole world, and it spread. So the gospel had free course, and that's where it will end up again. Uh, in the eternal round so we have God's purpose revealed in, in the beginning in the pre-creation pre in the garden in Jerusalem in Christ's time and through Israel's history and of the promise to come it's all about his kingdom to come the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven becoming the kingdom of God established on on earth as it, is in, as it is in heaven which will be again in Jerusalem so up as Christ's ministry up to there Christ taught was teaching to Israel so Christ was teaching of the law how to be perfect and live in the kingdom and he was the kingdom come to be received to enter into the kingdom to come, which is a future, which is in the millennium, millennial reign of Christ, which is uh, at the end, after the period of, as I've already said, wrath, and that will be his second advent. So his second advent will take place after the seven year period, and he will step in bring down all his enemies because he's already beaten his enemies on the cross it's being fulfilled so he's appearing with all the saints because he's going to take up his bride his church all the body of christ all the believers in the body drawn the little complete body there will be raptured they will be in a twinkling of an eye they will be with christ then then there'll be seven years of tribulation and then the end, then the, then the millennial reign, then the, the, the day of the Lord. So there's a great and dreadful day of the Lord, and that's when he comes. With all his saints, all the people he's taken up, all the, all the old faithful saints from heaven will come down and rescue Israel, which will be snatched out of the fire. And all his enemies that he's had victory over, because he's, he's conquered hell sin and death and then the author of it is satan who's a fallen power fallen entity an eternal entity that he created and he's the only victor over it because mankind can't overcome satan by himself he can't overcome himself by himself so god had to draw all men unto himself to be perfect to be holy and jesus taught that the law doesn't bring that holiness within your heart, within your life. That by keeping it, you're just being self-righteous. It's convicting you of your sin. Because you can't be holy by keeping the law. So Christ came to put that law in the hearts of the believer, of the Jew and the Gentile, that they may live in love, in the true law, in the true nature, fearfully, in the right way love thy neighbour as thyself 
love God as you give commandment. The commandment is to believe in Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ will grant you that life and that love. And then you'll be able to fulfill the law through the love and the Holy Spirit. Rather than remaining with the absence of the one in your life, remain in the zero in your life, dead in sin, and you'll live for sin and, and the flesh and the lusts and prides of life. And you'll be, you won't be able to live a holy life. And you won't be able to sustain your life forever. Because Christ is the way, he's the door. The only way, the resurrection and the life. The Passover lamb. The light, the word, and the way, and the rock. And his, his apostles died for that. And his resurrection, he laid down his life. Took it up again. So he's established his church. And the apostles' testimony of their death of the faithfulness of his life in them which they died for going the way of Christ followed him into the grave already receiving the resurrection and the victory in their lives so that was the founding of the gospel of the church so all the miracles all the witness of the healing was only for that period to Israel and the establishing of the faithfulness of his glory and his word and his resurrection. So today we live through faith in that which is faithful and established in the word. It's established in the rock. The one word, the King James, the, what, the Old Testament, the New Testament, from the author and finisher, from heaven, from the Father, from Jesus Christ, Establishing his rock, who is Christ, the head of the whole body, the head of the church. So through faith you become established on the church, on the rock, on the foundation. There's no miracles today. There's no healings, there's no telling the future. All prophecies being revealed from the author and finisher of prophecy, Jesus Christ, and that all the prophecy that is to be revealed has been revealed and it's sealed, preserved as a standard faithful record and measure of the word of God, of the will of God. So today all established and enter into the kingdom, into heaven, through the rock, through the word, through the way, through the door, through the light, through the life giver and then they appropriate his atonement, become established on his rock. So there's no miracles, there's no need for priesthood, there's no need for church organisations as such as they are. Uh, the, the church is made up of all individuals, diverse individuals. And it's simply through faith that you become placed on the rock. So all the miracles and tongues and all the healings were for a period which has been faithfully preserved by those who took part in that dispensation. Then the way opened up out of Jerusalem from Paul and then the gospel of faith, repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the free gift of eternal life went out to all the world and that's where we are now, today. It's the same gospel, the same rock, the same way, the same word, the same God. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same today, forever. Same yesterday and today and forever. He's eternal and he's established his way. And salvation is now, today, to anyone, simply through faith and belief. But if you reject Christ, you'll die in your sins. Christ said to his people, the Jews, who rejected him, if you don't believe that he was God, he was faithful and sent from the Father, and that he's the only way to receive eternal life, if you didn't believe that he was the Son of God, that they would perish in their sins. What he meant was they would remain in their sin, they would die in their sin, and they wouldn't partake the tree of life. And they would be shut off 
like the flaming sword of Eden forever in hellfire and that's the same to anyone anyone who wants wants to be saved can be saved because Christ has made the way for all men to be saved and he promised the father said it that uh, that the Lord said that you know only the Father could draw all men unto Himself, and the way He done that was by sending His Son, and His Son completing the will of the Father on the cross. Made open the door, open the way that all may receive the light and eternal life through Jesus Christ, through His love, through His merit, through His grace, through His mercy, that none would perish, none would be lost, because all souls are perish. All souls are priceless and precious. And in God's wisdom he died that he may draw all, all men to have the opportunity, to have the choice, to have the freedom to be saved. And it's free. There's no strings to it. Simply through what he's done that no man could do for themselves. Be holy and share that holiness with the believer. A uh, fool of mankind can't know the holy eternal nature. Um, there's an ex excellent scientist giving an analogy on dimensional physics saying how a three-dimensional world couldn't comprehend a four-dimensional being coming into it. Or a two-dimensional world couldn't comprehend a three-dimensional three object because one's flat, two-dimensional and it has that two-dimensional comprehension of its environment whereas a three-dimensional object is a different dimension that one, can't, that one can't comprehend that one so it's like Christ, he's an eternal dimension, eternal nature whereas mankind's a created nature with a beginning and it's lost, it doesn't know anything it just takes everything for granted, it just is because it's been created been gifted and for it to have that eternal nature it's got to be perfect it can't be perfect it wasn't perfect from the beginning it was born imperfect so the only way for that thing to be perfect is to be washed in the blood of Christ in the blood of God that's why Christ said fear the fear of God is the beginning of the wisdom belief is the only way to salvation to fear God and believe that's why the Jews rejected Christ because they didn't believe he was God in the flesh. They, they misunderstood, so they didn't believe him. And it's the same today, if you don't believe you're not going to know. But he's certain, faithful, and he's known by those who do believe. So if you remain in your sin you'll perish, and you'll be lost. That's why Christ died, that all may be saved. But people sadly will be lost because they won't simply through they won't because they won't believe, and the Jews won't believe. They don't believe in the Trinity. They didn't believe in the Trinity. But today, uh, Jews are being saved. They are believing in 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 Jesus Christ, in the truth, in the way, in the Word, in the Gospel, and they're being saved. So it's my prayer that the Jews will hear the Gospel. And all the world will hear the gospel and come to know the, the word of God and the faithfulness and the life and the free gift and the grace and the joy of, um, of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is all about the Lord, it's about Jesus Christ and the gospel and, his, and the glory of God, of God the Father, revealed in His Son and offered. I'm going to start, start with some scripture reading. So the whole, just skimmed over the plan, plan of salvation, God's purpose, revealed in the scriptures, so the dispensations of God. So we've got the Old Testament into the New so in time, we're, we're here somewhere, oh excuse me, approaching the period of wrath. Now God's called this period uh, 
Jacob's expected end. And it's his purpose in because of the Israel's unbelief and the wisdom through their unbelief opening up the way for all the world to know and be known of God, to know the love of God, to be drawn unto God and receive that kingdom, that heart of the eternal one in, in their hearts, in their life, to be born again, to be born of the spirit. Jesus said, you must be born again, to be born of the flesh and then born of the spirit. So Christ in the fullness of the Godhead took up the flesh, died, restored his life, his flesh, and rose again with his wounds still in his hands and in his feet. So he's revealed the glory of God and the faithfulness of the word of God and the kingdom to come. So in the period of the the church age it's called faith alone in grace unto good works rather than the works of the law towards the one to come now he's come because of the love received the fullness and the mystery the fullness of god revealed received in the heart of a person's life unto good works which is establishing his way which has been established from eternity to eternity of his promise and his kingdom to come after the period of wrath and he's called it uh, the slaughter Jacob's expected end Jacob's trouble the great tribulation period it's referred to by Christians the seven year tribulation period where the antichrist will come where the one world globalist dominant body and power will start to take dominion over the earth trying to bring in its purpose trying to bring in its plan for mankind rather than Christ's already completed once and forever purpose for mankind the rock to be saved to know God to receive life to know you're dead and to receive life to be born again so there's a simple plan so I'm going to cover some scriptures um, and mainly on the uh, the glory of uh, the Father in, revealed in Jesus Christ and the word of, of Jesus spoke, spoken, revealed and preserved in his word. And uh, so I'm going to read the scriptures and um, round it off. So start with Revelation. This is the, the words of Jesus Christ himself. Um, start in Revelation 1 verse 8 let's see verse 8 I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty so he, he, the Lord state in his own eternal nature I am the Alpha and Omega the first and the last the author the beginning and the end the start and the finish the finisher I am the uh, verse 18, uh, verse 17 into 18, and, it, um, and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, this is a, uh, the Lord is an angel, is a resurrected angel appearing to John, the revelator. I am the first and the last, and I am he that liveth, and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore Amen and have the key, keys of hell and death so Jesus is revealing to uh, John his uh, disciple that, uh, that he is the resurrection that he is Jesus that he is the Lord and God and that he was alive he was dead, but is alive. He liveth, he ever, ever liveth. I am alive forevermore. Amen. Um, here's another scripture of the Lord's purpose revealed in Revelation 22. 
Revelation 22, start verse uh, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are, are they that do his commandments. And the commandment is to believe in Jesus Christ and love, love God and love one another as God has loved, has loved. His, uh, as of the world, as his believers received, to love as he is, as they've been loved. Blessed are they that do his commandments, this is verse 14, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, idolaters and whoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is the first come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So Christ, uh, Jesus is testifying, he's Alpha and at the beginning and the end, the Lord, the resurrection. And he's in, his purpose is to invite, to taste to come unto him and to taste of the, to receive the water of life really through him that we may drink and receive everlasting life. So I'm going to start with Revelation, Let's start with John, the, uh, what the word of God reveals about the eternal nature of uh, Jesus Christ. John 1. Um, in the beginning was the Word, so we have, in the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, so the Word was with the Father, God the Father, the Word was with God, and God the Holy Spirit, says God, free in one purpose. Three persons in one purpose, in one heart, one will, one nature. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is the Word. In the beginning, in in the beginning, in eternity, before creation, is the beginning, because he's the beginning and the end. He's eternal. There's no beginning. There's no end. He is the beginning and the end. He's the author and finisher, the light, the way of life, the Creator, the Lord and God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Right, that's the John 1. Um, uh, John was a witness of the light, and he goes on to uh, state the testimony of... Uh, Jesus Christ in the glory of the Father. Where should we pick it up at? I won't read the whole chapter. Um, let's go to Genesis. Hang on, let's go get that. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he have declared him. And this is a record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask who art thou right go to Genesis Genesis 1 so in, in the Old Testament the triune nature of God has been revealed in many many of the books, many of the prophecies, many of the psalms, just the um, 
the father and the son discussing and talking. Uh, there's a demonstr there's a, an example in Genesis, a, and there's an examples in the shadows and types and patterns of the of the relationships of Israel, the body of the people of Israel, and the Lord's dealings with His hand in their life. Genesis chapter 1 Genesis 1 In the beginning was God In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from darkness the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Right, firstly, in the beginning, so from eternity, God created the heaven and the earth, so he created the universe and the earth. So from one, from his value, from his heart, from his purpose, from his eternal sovereignty and glory, he created the earth. Now, he didn't create it from nothing. He created it from himself because he's God. So he brought it into existence by his word, by his power, by his glory. In the beginning, say, by the word of God. Um, and God said, let there be light and there was light so and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep so there was no light so there was nothing just space darkness and a rock the earth void it didn't create itself and that void that value of voidness and, and empty space was a value of nothing and God brought something from the value of himself, his power from nothing into existence and then he created the light and then he brought that into existence from his authorship, from his value from his order, from his power from his glory, from his purpose, from his heart from his uh, love so it doesn't happen the other way around you can't Organize chaos can't order, organize itself. Um, zero can't ever obtain any value. Zero is the absence, omission of any value, whereas the value has value, and that for all value, all all value like numbers come from the number one. Number two is two ones. Number three is three ones. Four is four ones. Doesn't matter how high you go, they're all all from the value of one. So in eternity, God created and brought into existence the creation and mankind. And mankind didn't know God. But God is eternal and God's always existed. There's not a time where God did not exist. So man cannot comprehend God, but God comprehends all things because he's the light. And he brought into life creation under his under his grace fearfully um, right let's go to verse 3 22 so the triune God created the heavens and the earth through his son through his word Jesus Christ um, just a quick example Genesis 3:22, and the Lord God said, "Behold, the man has become as one of us." So God created man in His own image, to know good and evil. And now let's put forth its hand and take who is the tr take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore God sent him forth out of the garden of Eden. That wasn't quite the verse I wanted. Um, but anyway, the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. So God is speak he's not speaking to himself. He's speaking, the Father speaking to his word. Um, 
So that's demonstrated in many times in the scriptures and uh, the Father is revealed through the prophets of the faithfulness in types and shadows and patterns and directly through prophecy of his Son because it's all about Jesus, it's all about the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll get to the scriptures. And there's many demonstrations of uh, uh, God's glory. Let's go to uh, Isaiah of the Son. And the Jews don't believe that there's a... Um, in, they didn't believe in the Son, although the scriptures point to the, the one great, the Moses, to come. All the prophecies of the Lord, his, his burial, his death, his kingdom, his glory, is all revealed in the pattern of the scriptures in the lives of the prophets, the lives of the people of Israel. But they still rejected the Son of God. They didn't believe that they were stuck on that God is one. They couldn't understand or comprehend that Jesus is the Son of God. But they, could, they couldn't comprehend the Trinity. No one can comprehend the Trinity. So um, Christ was rejected as the Messiah, um, but it prophet, the prophecies are all about Jesus. They're his prophecy, they're his word, his burden to Israel to come, and his burden is the salvation of all souls and the salvation of his people Israel, and that's the glory of the Father, the glory of the Son, the glory in the Son to the Father. Um, Psalm 22 My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from me, helping me and from the words of my roaring? So this is a messianic psalm of David. This is like what David's going through, but it's prophesying of what Christ will go through on the cross. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season I am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the places of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord, that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out, out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have come past me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the mist of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot's head, my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And now has brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have come past me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me, they part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. Be now not far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me, deliver my soul from the sword. My darling, from the power of the dog, save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I would declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation when I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised, nor had all the afflicted of the afflicted, neither have he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation, I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied, they shall praise the Lord that seek him, your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. 
All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. That's a prophecy of Christ on the cross, his resurrection and glory. All in that one, that one prophecy. Right, let's so take the uh, Psalm 2. Another mention of uh, to Israel of the Son. And there's many, many types, many references. Uh, Psalm 2, verse 12. Kiss the Son. Serve the Lord, uh, verse 11, serve the Lord with fear and trembling, uh, uh, f with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son lest he be angry and he perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Um, right, the Father declared his Son, um, through his Son, by his word, to Isaiah. Um, chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born so this is a prophecy of Jesus unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and it have lighted upon Israel and all the people shall know even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria that say in the pride and stoutness of heart so there's a prophecy of the advent first advent and the second advent the, 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 the completion of the Lord and the coming of the Son of God who's mighty God so I don't know what Israel were thinking uh, who that is and who that was or who that is was, would be but it was the Lord Jesus Christ it's the mighty God uh, the everlasting father Israel's everlasting father the prince of peace the counsellor wonderful the, govern the government all authority sovereign all upon his shoulders that's Isaiah verse 9 um, it's Hosea 11 Quickly skim through. There's a type of um, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So it's a type and shadow like the body of Israel. The people of Israel were a body, a person, a child, a son. And he called them, uh, Jehovah called. Israel as a child then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt so the uh, Israelites were delivered from bondage into the wilderness and into the kingdom into the the law into the freedom and the blessings of the law to the life into the grace of God into the fellowship and the uh, blessings of uh, God's God's um, jealousy in their lives and like Jesus Christ in the gospel uh, uh, Jesus was uh, born in Bethlehem then the father took him rescued him told uh, Joseph the Holy Spirit or an angel told Joseph in a dream or he heard uh, the Lord in a dream take you know get in get, get out into Egypt because they're after the God's son because Herod was going to kill and did kill all the Jewish children so Jesus was taken into Egypt so there's a type there when Israel was a child then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt so like, like Israel was called out of bondage Christ being sin for us was called out of Egypt to be deliverer from bondage the, a type of Moses 
Um, Moses was a type of Christ who came, fulfilled all the prophecies of his death, burial and resurrection, his, his kingdom, the way and the life to come, the bread and the prophet to come who, who faithfully completed the law, fulfilled the law, fulfilled the prophecies and established the law through, through love, through grace, which is received through faith. So um, that was that reference. So um, Christ was referenced as the rock, 1 Corinthians 10, and the rock is Christ, and the rock was Christ. Let's go there. Um, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud, speaking to you, um, referring to the fathers of Israel, are under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptised unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Uh, neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day and feet twenty thousand. And it goes on not to tempt the Lord. So the Lord's referred there as the rock to Israel. The rock was Christ. So that rock when that baptism into the body of Christ is is Christ. It was the the rock Israel's mess the Lord's messenger to Israel who spoke to Moses in the cloud and led them and led Israel. It's the same Lord, the same God, the same way, the same word. And that rock, that way, was Christ. That's uh, Corinthians 10. Um, right, let's see. The Lord declaring he's the bread of life. Go to John. Quickly go through this. John 6. John 6 um, The day following when the people were stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save the one wherewith his disciples were entered and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat but, but that his disciples were gone away alone howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people thereof saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence, whence, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled, Labour not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto an everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. From him have God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? So this is in Jesus' ministry to, the, to Israel. And a lot of the crowd for the fame just wanted to see, wanted to eat and uh, witness the show and uh, they missed the mark and got um, the Lord's exalting them to believe and receive the the meat of life to believe in Jesus basically then they said unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of God so all they wanted to do was have the power to do what Jesus the miracles of God Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. 
So Jesus has completed the work, God's work, and it's received fully through faith. So believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign seekest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What, what does thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they're looking for a sign, looking for um, miracles. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So there's another type. The, the Lord fed the people of Israel manna from heaven which grew on the ground. And Jesus was a type of the bread of life, given himself from heaven, coming down from heaven to the people of Israel. And Jesus is a pit, standing in front of them and they're looking for a sign. And he's saying, I, he's basically trying to bring their attention that he is the sign, he is the bread, he is the way, he is the, the life. He is the one sent from the Father. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is a will, this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believe on him may have an everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So there's Jesus' declaration and promise. Um, let's go back to First uh, John. I missed the verse. I want to catch it. Capture it. First uh, John, verse fifteen. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he is before me. And of his uh, fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, uh, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So there, the Jesus is a declaration from the by the Holy Spirit in John in his his life and testimony that Jesus is the fullness has received that the believers have received the fullness they've received the witness of Jesus in their lives and that no man has seen God at any time except Jesus who was sent which is in the bosom of the Father he have declared him so in the heart and bosom like Jerusalem is the bosom of the earth. Jesus is the bosom of the Father in the beginning, is eternal. So I wanted to capture that scripture. Um, see the de the Lord's uh, the Father's declaration of His Son again, capturing the the wisdom and the triune nature of God. Yeah, let's go to Luke. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape. So this is uh, Jesus' ministry. And he's just appeared to John. He's just approaching John the Baptist. John, John the Baptist is crying in the wilderness, repent. Bring fruit, bring fruit, meat for repentance. And make straight the way of the Lord. Um, Luke 3, uh, 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape. So here's the witness of the Father from heaven. So the, the Holy Spirit appears as, as a bodily shape, appears as a dove, as a witness of the Father, of the Word, of the Son, by the Holy Spirit of the glory of God in the Son. So the Holy Spirit is a witness of the 
So the, the Father's not glorifying himself, the Son's not glorifying himself, the Holy Spirit is serving the, the Father's glory selfishly in the bodily form as a witness. And uh, the Son, the Father, the voice from heaven, so in the Holy Spirit, from heaven, from the Father, and the Holy Ghost ascended in the bodily shape like a dove upon him. So the Holy Ghost shines upon Christ. So rests upon him, uh, the bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven. So Father, the Father from heaven, um, on his Son, witness to his son the holy spirit and the bodily dove and a witness from the father in heaven of the triune nature of god which said thou art my beloved son in thee i am well pleased so there we have a record of the witness of the trinity the father in heaven the holy spirit is all sign and the son in the flesh on earth And the father pointing out as a witness to John and the people in, in earshot. This is my beloved son and for the record, faithful record in the scriptures. This is my beloved son in thee I am well pleased. Um, right, so to Luke 7. Now a similar testimony from the father is in the transfiguration. So that's the... The period in the Lord's ministry where he goes up into the mountain and Elijah and Moses appear with him. And then they disappear in the, the Father's voice. Uh, the, Peter and John hear the Father's voice because they're the only disciples that witness Jesus' transfiguration, which is this glory in the pre-existence in the flesh, in his body being revealed in the mount and then the father again is declaring um, a witness uh, for I say unto you among those are born of women have I got the right chapter no Luke 9 <coughs> Luke 9 and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, and he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. I beg your pardon, James is there as well. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. So Jesus is changing in his, his body by his power, by his grace, by the grace of God, by his holiness and glory, the glory of the Father in Jesus. And behold, they talk with him two men, so something's going on that uh, Jesus is communion with two heavenly beings, Moses and Elijah, Elias, who appeared in glory. So they're in glory, they're transfigured. So Christ is in glory in his body. So he's in pre, it's like he's in pre-incarnate glory in the, being witnessed in the flesh on the mountain with two glory, glorified persons, Moses and Elias who appeared in glory and spake of his decrees, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they were with him, were heavy and were asleep, and when they were awake they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto him, Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? And let us make three tab tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of these things which they had seen. And it came to pass that on the next day they were come down from the hill, much people met him. So there we have a witness of the Lord's glory. Now it was only revealed after the end of the disciples' ministry in the writings of the gospel some uh, 70, 90, however years later, the, the recording of the 
the Gospels was written and then it then it then it came out to be revealed to the world what what after the resurrection of Jesus what they had actually witnessed on the mountain so they witnessed the glory of God uh, pre his uh, resurrection so so pre the cross saw the glory so his eternal glory and then again revealed in his resurrection which was witnessed by many people and who the disciples died for so there we have um, let's go to John 11 the resurrection and the life and Jesus uh, again declares this to uh, Mary uh, John let's go to John quickly Matthew Mark Luke John uh, John 11 25 and 26 Jesus saith this is on Martha and Mary the friends of Jesus the sisters of Lazarus Jesus' friend and beloved friends Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believe thou this she saith unto him yea Lord I believe that thou art the Christ the Son of God which should come into the world so Jesus is declaring himself the resurrection before he's been resurrected. I am the resurrection and the life. So it's a positive affirmation of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And who, who is ever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this. So like John 3, who believes is passed from con condemnation unto life, but he who doesn't believe remains under condemnation and the anger and wrath of God. So there's Jesus' declaration that he's the resurrection and the life. Um, he declared his oneness with the Father, John 10, um, and he's, that he was the, the, the door. Uh, where should we go? John 10. Um, then, G then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Shall go in and out and find pasture. So there's John 10. Um, he's the door. And he declared that he and his father were one. Um, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So as Jesus' declaration is equal with God the Father. Um, let's go to John uh, 8. 58. Jesus said unto them, John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am, so um, declaring as the prophets declared uh, about Moses, saying, who, who should I, to Israel, who should I say, Lord, that sent me, and, and Jehovah said, send, tell them I am sent me, so God the Father speaking to Moses through his word, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the the angel of the Lord, the pre-incarnate Lord and Saviour, the resurrection, spoke to Moses and said, the messenger of the, the word of the Father said, uh, tell Israel, I am sent you. And now Jesus is in the flesh on earth. After the death of Abraham and death of Moses, He's saying, before Abraham was, before Abraham was created, I am. So Jesus is declaring himself equal with the Father of Jehovah God, the triune God of the Bible, the triune God of Isaac, um, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So as another testament of the Lord's divinity from his own... Um, 
his own word, his own witness within himself, because he's God, he can't deny himself. But he didn't come to glorify himself, he came to glorify his Father, and then his Father would be glorified in him at the end, it would be revealed. So Christ won't be glorifying himself, the Father will glorify him. Because Christ gave his will up for the Father, that the Father may be glorified in his Son, that all may be glorified in him who believe. Jesus answered, um, where am I, John 14. Jesus said, I am the way. This is John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus is declaring, I am the way, the only way. I am the truth, the life. Uh, John 1 says Jesus was the light, the light of all men, full of great, full of the fullness of grace and truth. Jesus grew from grace and truth with God the Father and mankind. He was full of grace and truth. The fullness in the God, the fullness of the Godhead bodily was revealed in Jesus by His power, by His presence, by His glory. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 10, he says, I'm the door. And the um, before Abraham was, I am. John 8, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, let's go to the Trinity, uh, Colossians 2. Now, Colossians 2 is the the fulfilling of the law, the completion of the law in Christ, the, his bodily death, his burial and resurrection, putting away the, um, the need for the temple ordinances, the law, sharpening the law, completing the law to establish the law through Christ, through love. Um, being the rock, the foundation, the establishment of, of the will of God in his son. Um, the second Corinthians is the promise of the completion of the fullness and the victory of Jesus and the resurrection and the promise of the completion in the believer and how because of Christ's finished work on the cross he's put an end to the ordinances of the law of the law, the temple law not the um, ceremonial law not 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 the not not ending the law, not putting the law away, but completing, fulfilling the law, sharpening the law, um, perfecting it. Um, second Colossians we want. We passed it. So second Colossians, Christ has put. Um, through his sacrifice, through his death, burial, and resurrection, and through his victory, he's put away an end to the um, ordinances of the gospel. He's ended religion, basically, uh, triumphed over all um, powers, made an open show, of, and through his glory, uh, re removed the cloak of sin. Um, in verse 9, Second Colossians 2. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And speaking to the believer, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So Christ is the head of the whole body, and the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the full authority of the Father in Christ, in the believer, in the body of Christ, in the church. So there's the simple gospel repentance rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abound in there and with thanksgiving as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith so it's by faith that we're established in him by him and by what he's done on the cross putting an end to the uh, ordinances of the gospel the temple because uh, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the, the Father and the Son. Uh, 
Right, let's go to First John quickly. First John. So there's revealed the uh, heart, mind, and will, and the triun triunity in 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 the life of God, in the life of Jesus. The testimony of Paul, because he received the fullness of Jesus, so he's revealing to the Colossian believers, the Christian believers, of the fullness revealed in Jesus and the believer now being complete by their faith in the grace and merit, fullness of the Father in Jesus, of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. First John 5, so it's uh, revealing God's fullness, which is his purpose, which is revealed in First uh, John. Um, right, let's do the, the witness of God. Let's go to First John 3. This is a commandment. So this is God's will, and this is its commandment. We should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us a commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby know he that abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Um, right. First John 5. Um, right, let's read the witness. Three witnesses in... Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Uh, let's go to verse 3. John, 1 John 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we, should, we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. I've just read to you his commandment. And whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So Christ has overcome the world. And by our faith in his grace, we receive the victory that he's, he's uh, given freely. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. So this is he that came in the flesh from the womb of Mary. By the power of God, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. So by life, the blood, one blood, one cre God's creation, in the water and the blood, and in, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So the author of life is given a witness in himself of the um, the, the the Lord come by flesh and blood. The Son of God, the Son of the Father, the only begotten of the Father, for the grace and truth come by the Spirit, water and blood. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So there's one, one God, one purpose, but there's three persons. For there are three that bear record in heaven, not one, but three. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, the Resurrection the word of the Father, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three are, in, are agree in one. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, that he hath testified of his Son. He that believe on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, he that believe not God hath made him a liar, because he believes not the record of the God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. He that hath the Son have life, and he that hath not the Son of God have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So to, to know God you believe, and to believe you can receive, and then you can continue on believing, knowing, believing on the name of the Son of God. And then the, there's three faithful wise witnesses because it's the only way that you need three for god to be glorified in his creation and it's also witnessed in the on the earth there are three that bear record in heaven father the word and the holy ghost and these three are one and there's three that bear witness in earth the spirit and what's the spirit the spirit of life god's spirit the holy spirit 
Now, the, there's only one spirit, but the, 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 the antithesis of that spirit is the absence of that spirit. So there's two spirits, but there's only one spirit from heaven. All things are created from the one spirit. So there's one spirit in heaven and on earth. The light of upon all men's conscience, the Holy Spirit from the heaven, the sovereign glory of God in heaven. And the water, so this is God's witness of, of his creation, of his spirit, of his word, of his will, of his purpose, of his, his revealed truth in his word and in his son. That there's one water, there's only one water, whether it's sea, rain, it's, uh, there's only one H2O, there's one water, and it's a testament of the creator. One water and one blood, there's only one blood, life, the life-giving blood. There might be animal blood, reptile blood, human blood, but there's only one blood, like one water, one spirit, one life, one creation, one earth, one heaven. Many heavens in the one heaven, one earth, one God, one author, one finisher, one creator, one way, one truth, one life, one resurrection, one Lord and one God. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. We don't need the witness of men because we have the uh, faithful witness of God and, and, and that's received through faith. In the, so if you don't believe, you're not going to see the, light, the, the grace of God. To understand the word of God, you need the grace of God to understand it. And if you don't believe, you're not going to see it and continue on believing. So you need to... Uh, fear God and believe on his terms and receive his will who is his son Jesus Christ which is what the word of God is stating and that the, the, the nature of God is free free is free in one and if you reject the son you reject the father that's the spirit of antichrist the word declares say God is triune in nature the father, the word, and the holy spirit and these three are one in purpose God is love. Um, where, where's that scripture? God is love. Um, uh, who is alive? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Right. Uh, um, First and five, four and eight. Let's check that out. Uh, Psalm one hundred ten. Right, this is um, the triune, pre-incarnate witness of God in the Old Testament. So, Israel without excuse, the Jews are without excuse about rejecting. Um, Jesus Christ their Messiah but if it wasn't for their rejection Israel would have um, the world would the, the church today wouldn't have uh, existed it's only that the, the gospel went to all the world because of Israel's unbelief so they got, in God's wisdom it opened the gospel to everybody and it kept Israel inclusive from the beginning throughout to the end of God's heart, mind and purpose for his people Israel. Uh, the Christianity, the organised Christian body today doesn't believe that is Israel exists anymore, that the church body, the people of the church, of believers in Christ have replaced Israel, but that's not true. Because it's revealed in Romans 11, Romans 12, of Israel's whole purpose. I haven't got time to go into that at the moment. Uh, Psalm 10, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod out of thy strength, out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through the kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. 
He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore he shall lift up the head. So there's a, um, the triune God. The Lord said unto my Lord. The Father said unto the Son. Sit thou on my right hand. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And the Lord shall send out a rod out of thy strength out of Zion. So from heaven, from God's kingdom, God's power, God's throne, came Christ. And he gained the victory over sin and death on the cross. So this prophecy is the Father and the Son and the victory and the resurrection. And his promise of his completion and his certainty. And that's in Psalm 110. I just want to... Um, Uh, right, so let's go back to First John. First John chapter 4. Uh, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Uh, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So there's God's whole purpose, is just to simply love. Jesus' purpose was to die and draw all men unto himself. Um, let's go to John 6. Uh, John 6. John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Uh, John 4, John 12. So there's the Father sending his Son to die to draw all men unto himself in the plan of salvation. Uh, John 12. And Jesus is declaring himself God. Uh, and if I, uh, John twelve thirty two, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, that have heard out the law, that Christ abide forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto him, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have light, lest darkness come upon you. And ye that have walked in the darkness, and have not, wherever he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So before Jesus' resurrection and, and um, his victory on the cross, he's declaring he'd be lifted up as the Father declared, sending his Son to draw all men unto himself. But the way is completed that, that all men are drawn unto Jesus by his victory on the cross because he's the way, the light and the truth there's nothing else he's put his purpose revealed his purpose in his son at the Hebrews 1 uh, Hebrews 1 the father's declaration revealed in by Jesus, by God the father's will in the son in the book of Hebrews um, Go to 13 first, start there. Hebrews uh, 13. thirteen eight. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 1. God who in sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So God in times past revealed his son, revealed his word unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So the Father by the Son made all the worlds, and have declared his Son. How did he declare his Son? By the will of the Son, of the Father, coming in the flesh and dying for all sin, and the resurrection and the life, and the, the gospel and the certainty and the, the sure and faithful victory and hope in Christ and the rock 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and holding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which the angels said, Here at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels he saith, Who make of his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou art remainest. But thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as dove a garland. And as a vesture thou shalt fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and my years shall not fail. But to which the angel said, He at any time sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation? Who shall be heirs of salvation? So Jesus Christ, the Eternal, declared by the Father that he had the, the, the majesty and the power of God in the beginning and that the Father has declared this through his Son by the Holy Spirit, through the Word in, in the vessels of the, the author or who the, who the Lord used to pen the scriptures, being the author of the oracle who wrote the book of Hebrews, is revealed by the Holy Spirit there, the will of the Father, the will of the Son, the deity and glory, and the, the truth that Jesus is the Lord and God and Creator, and well-beloved of the Father. It please, It's all about Jesus. It's all about the... The glory of the Father and the Son, all for the Son, the, the Son's sake, which is the Father's glory. Um, uh, John 6, John 12, read James 4. Uh, there's another promise, James 4. And I think I'm nearly about done. Um, might have a few PS's at the end. Uh, James 4 verse 8 Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Uh, so there's a promise within the book of James just to you. Israel and all the world to draw an eye to God to repent to believe in Jesus and uh, the gospel is quite simple as it's been revealed let's go through the gospel very quickly Mark 1 and then I'll round it up this is the gospel Mark 1 the same gospel, same dispensation, same Lord, same God. There's only one gospel. It's just dispensed in different ways. Um, to different people at different times in different states. Today it's the, the will of God for all men to repent and believe through faith in Jesus Christ. That is it. No more, no less. To, be, to enter in the narrow way in the door. To be born again. To be saved. That's the start, that's the, the main purpose, to know the love of God, to, be, to receive life, to be saved, to be redeemed, to be re God's purpose to be re realised in your life, in your heart, to lose your life, to find your life, is to believe and follow the Lord. Uh, Mark 1, 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So that's it. The salvation, uh, 2 Corinthians 6. Salvation, now is the day of our salvation. Uh, so eternity is now. 
and salvation is a probation to know God and it's a do or die choice you believe and live or you remain in unbelief and die and you'll be lost to God forever and you'll go to hell that's the gospel truth and there's only one gospel one God one way let's go to Acts now during this part of the Lord's ministry uh, the gospel was still being taught to Israel and then it went to the Gentiles and then the establishment of the rock which was finished, it's completed and then the gospel was by faith alone this is a uh, clarified so there's a chain uh, the book of Acts is a an account of the works of the apostles and the transition from the ministry to the Jews to the ministry of the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles so it's opening the door of Jerusalem and the gospel going out to the whole world by Paul Paul's gospel, Paul's ministry it wasn't the same, it's a different gospel of Peter but it was the same gospel, it was just to a different people and the time of um, there's periods in uh, the old the Lord is talking to Israel referring to Israel in this period so it's not applying to the p believers today in this period it's talking about people in that time then and those in unbelief in that period there to come the, the time before the Lord's uh, Advent what I remember, I just want to read a quick scripture to mark a um, one of the prophecies. All, all, all the uh, prophecies uh, reveal different things and put different bits of meat on the bone, the same bone, the same gospel, same meat, same water, but it reveals more detail. And in uh, Micah 7, we have a, now most of the prophecies cover cover this period of Jacob's trouble, the pre-advent of the Messiah, the second advent of the Messiah, because they missed the first advent, and he's going to come again the second time round. Uh, Micah seven and Israel are going to go through. Um, see now, sadly for Israel, they've been led and deceived for the slaughter the, the dominant world is was well, going to encroach them and uh their you know their their lands coveted their rights are coveted their inheritance is coveted and this is all through the power and spirit of the devil the omnis the uh, omission of christ holy charitable spirit in the world and in in the people that are against israel so in Israel's expected end has been revealed in all the prophecies. So all the prophecies cover that area, the Lord's ministry, and it's overlaid with that area. So it's the same Lord, the Son of Man and the Son of David. So there's two advents that one book of prophecy will cover. So the prophecy is always covering uh, different details on these two different periods in time in the dispensations of the gospel so now that the gospel's complete and that part of prophecy is fulfilled through Christ you can know which part of prophecy through belief because if you don't believe you're not going to know so the invitation is for people to believe to know themselves so that the truth may set them free and grant that person the wisdom and light and knowledge and surety and hope in of God in Jesus Christ. So that's to come. So the prophecy is in two twofold, and it overlays. You can miss it. It's um, se separated sometimes only in, in the same verse by a, a semicolon, and it's talking about this, the same in one verse. Two advert, two advents. Right, Micah 7. Now this is a period in Israel's history when they realise. So Israel, in because of unbelief, Israel are going to go towards the same place, but it's a different time. So it's the same, same gospel, purpose and God, 
but at a different time in Jerusalem. So since the time of Christ and now the re, re the reclaiming of Israel as a nation and a people, putting them in their own land where we are today, which is the fulfilling of prophecy, the prophecy to come that has come and that is and will come, who's Christ. So many of the Old Testament prophecies cover this area, this period where Israel will go into and because of Israel's unbelief and missing the Lord the first time, he's promised that he will get them a second time. That they will go through the fire, they will go through judgment and they will be snatched as a branch out of the fire. And there's a period, uh, it's covered in Micah 7. Of the, now, there's many prophecies of the, it's called the, the day of the Lord, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that's the the appearing of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, but also the period building up to the day of the Lord, which is called Jacob's Trouble, where um, Israel will realise that they're in a dead end. That and, and those that believe will, will seek the Messiah, they will seek to believe and realise that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and they will be waiting for him to come, and he will rescue them, but there will be people who don't believe who will perish and it will be destroyed. So there's a portion um, promised to Israel that they will be saved as a nation by Christ, by solely by Jesus Christ. And this is um, covered in many of the prophecies which are layered over the bones of the same plan. And it covers this area uh, of that seven year. God's wrath and judgment and fire is covered in Second Peter chapter three or chapter two, chapter three that God is not going to judge it with a flood, he's going to judge it with a fire. So God has given, granted that probational period into that warning that the whole world is going to go into judgment before his second advent. Uh, this is when Israel goes into that period, uh, Micah 7. Uh, but to check, check um, what I say, uh, measure what I am saying in case it's not not correct in 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 uh, context to the prophecy uh, referring to uh, Micah seven. Woe is me, for I am when they have gathered the summer fruits as the, the grape gleanings of the vintage, that there is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. So uh, Israel realizing is that it's the end of the summer. When they realise it's all dried up, it's all used up, the harvest is over kind of thing, the you know, the peak of the blessings have gone and passed. As the great lens of the vintage, there is no cluster to eat, my soul desired the first ripe fruit. So the good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men, they will lay in wait for blood, they hunt every man with his brother with a net. So the Lord is going to rapture his church at this period here before the great tribulation prophecy to come. So from today, from now to this to forward, at some point the Lord's going to take up his church into heaven. Israel are going to go, his, his people, his, his divided body, uh, Judah and Israel, are going to go into uh, the period of Jacob's trouble and this is a prophecy making them realise that the, the Lord has removed the Holy Spirit which is the, the, the restrainer so God has stopping things from getting out of hand and God judges momentarily, moment by moment and controls sovereignly all things under heaven but there's a time when the church is removed, he's going to remove his, his grace, his hand, and he's going to allow the world to go into judgment and then wickedness will dominate, it will um, overflow itself, it will take power. Israel's going to realise that all the good men have gone from the earth, that all good is drying up, it's all dried up. The good man is perished out of the earth and there is none upright among men, they all lay in wait for his blood, they hunt every man, his brother with a net that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. So it's in the men's hearts just to do e evil. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for rewards, and the great men he uttereth mischief, desire, so they wrap it up. 
So the whole world, all the power, all the authorities, all the judges, all the uh, principalities are all knit in iniquity. They're all bent, they're all twisted, they're all scratching each other's back at this point in history that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. It's fully right. The ju judge asketh for a reward. So the judges are blind, they're bent. And uh, and the great man, he uttereth his mischief desire, so they wrap it up. So people are off with the judge a price, oh, you know, get me off the hook and I'll pay you this much. And so it's all wrapped up before it's begun. The best of them is a briar, the most upright is sharper than a fawn. Fawn hedge, the day thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not competence in the guide, keep the doors of thy mouth from her, the life in thy bosom, for the son dishonours the father and the daughter, rise up against the, her mother, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the man of his own house. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. So that's half of the book, um, chapter 7 of Micah, it's a prophecy of that period. Jacob's Israel's trouble to come when he realises that it's dried up and they're going to begin to turn to seek the Lord. I wanted to just include that in the, in the Gospel uh, because the Gospel is for Israel and, uh, and it's important because um, they're beloved and the, the Lord has got his mind and heart on Israel today and in the future. And, and, and he's promised if Israel seek him early they, they will find him so they're not outside the possibility of being saved Even all the religious Jews um, you know the, the Lord's outstretched his, his heart's wide open uh, the uh, Israel Jerusalem is the apple of the Lord's eye so the, the uh, church hasn't replaced Israel but the gospel is from Israel and it was to Israel and it's from Israel to the whole world because of Jesus Christ because of God the Father sending his son sending his word to die and the gospel going out from Jerusalem via the Holy Spirit in the Apostle Paul um, Acts and the disciples Acts 20 um, is a gospel Acts 20, 21, testifying both the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So since the completion of the Lord's Gospel and the going out of the Gospel, it's simply testifying to the Jews and the non-Jews, the Greeks, which is a non-Jew, anyone who's not a Jew, repentance toward God, to believe in God, have a change of mind, to seek God, to look to God, to turn and look to God and to seek forgiveness and to, to have faith, to repent and to toward God, to seek his mercy and forgiveness, to realise you're a sinner and you're bad and you want, you, you, you want God's remedy, you want his forgiveness, his mercy and to get that, to have faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, so you just have faith, that's the gospel. Um, Acts, let's quickly go to Acts 5, just clarifying what I've stated, Acts 5, him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, and we are witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God have given to them that obey him. <coughs> there's a faithful promise to the believer and anyone who repents that they can receive the witness of the Holy Ghost given to them that believe them that obey him so anyone can receive the uh, faithful witness uh, God's not respect for persons he died to save sinners to draw all men unto himself Jew and Gentile um, Acts 5 uh, Luke I think I've read Luke 24, let's read it again. So from that's the gospel, that to repent towards God and believe faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. And we have one God, one Lord, one gospel, one word, one faithfully preserved word in the King James, one prophecy, one author, one finisher of that faith, 
one resurrection and one life and then there's the opposite to that there's one death one way to death which is the broad way which is unbelief and uh, God has created people uh, to exist eternally he doesn't want anyone to perish that's why he died so he's faithful so there's, there's eternal life there's also eternal separation from that life which is eternal torment which is an unbearable, fearful, horrible thought. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I wouldn't want it on anybody. But, um, people choose that themselves through unbelief, um, through wickedness, and therefore they remain in unbelief and lost and go in their own way in the world. Hence why the world continues in going on in its own course, as it did from the beginning, and why we have an unjust world in there fallen world and a dying world and um, a failing human race uh, sustained by the grace and mercy of God outstretched that none shall perish but all should receive uh, the free gift of eternal life that's the gospel um, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So before the, the Pentecost, the, um, the Lord's testifying by the Holy Spirit that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name, in Jesus' name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So it starts at Jerusalem, it ends in Jerusalem. It began in heaven, which is Jerusalem, in the will of God's heart from the beginning, which is all a type of his heart, his bosom, his son, the apple of his eye, his people, his kingdom in those people, in the, in the heart, in the bosom of the earth in Jerusalem, from the heaven and the heart of God, the bosom on earth in the people of God, in Israel and all the world inclusive, which is to come at the end. So there's the simplicity, the gospel of uh, salvation to Jerusalem from Jerusalem the kingdom came and the kingdom to come the kingdom is the kingdom was the kingdom that is and will be and Christ is that king of the kingdom and the father's kingdom will be on earth in the millennial reign in reigning from Jerusalem so Zion the, he the, the throne of heaven God's throne will be on earth in Jerusalem and God will, Jesus will rule from heaven on earth in Jerusalem in the millennial reign. Well, let's go to 1 Timothy, just wrap up the gospel. Just to make all, relig all religious people redundant, all bishops, all priests, all religious systems, all uh, treadmills, all pay styles, all lawyers, all people that hedge, all Pharisees, all religious um, addicts who hedge up the way, who offer the way of salvation but haven't received salvation and therefore they don't teach salvation because salvation is simply to repent and to believe and to appropriate what Christ has completed, his life by his death on the cross and his victory and revealing of his life. Uh, First Timothy, chapter two. I've read this many times. This is probably one of the strongest scriptures. Uh, First Timothy two. Um, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. This is God's will revealed in, um, in Paul to Timothy from God and recorded in the first book of Timothy chapter uh, 2 verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, three, three in one, one in three, and one mediator between God and men, 
the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So the, the only way to the Father, the only, the only um, advocation anybody needs to, to know God, to fellowship, commune with God, to speak to God, to know God, to be known of God, is by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone that uh, that person can receive the the free gift and the Holy Spirit and the grace of God in their life, in their heart. Uh, Luke 21, the kingdom is in the, in the believer's heart. The kingdom of God is in your heart. It's not, um, you know, the, the church is in the heart of the believer. It's not in buildings, it's not in religion. It's on the rock. Anyone who two or three are gathered in the Lord's name, there he is among he there dwells amongst them or with them. He's in already indwelling in the believer when they come together. He's with them. Because that believer's already been born into heavenly places in Christ in heaven. He's on the right hand of God now. So the believers now they've received that witness within themselves and the only advocate and mediator it's Jesus Christ who gave, verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. He will be testified in due time of his faithfulness because when you die, you're going to meet God. And then when the resurrection comes and the, the second advent of Christ it's, and the judgment, then he will be revealed in due time as he's been faithful in times past, as he's completed his, his atonement to make way, to put the light on, to allow people to enter into heaven, to be saved, to be purchased by his precious blood and life, and taking up, only God could take up his life, and he, he offers that life freely. Um, let's read Romans 10. Um, and that's the gospel simply, and that if you perish in your sin and your unbelief, you'll remain lost. If you believe, you'll be saved now. You won't be saved um, later. You'll be saved now and then saved later as well. Because you'll be saved now. You have now eternity within you. Because it's now. Uh, Romans 10. Corinthians. Romans. Romans, Corinthians. Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I am the, uh, for I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law that the man which did these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, speaking on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it, the word is nigh, nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whoso sh shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear that preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for as I say, saith, Lord, who have believed our report? For then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, the sound went into all the earth, 
and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses say, if I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and say, if I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, all, all long have I stretched forth my hands unto a dis disobedient and gainsaying people. So there's the promise of the gospel and salvation, simply by believing, faith, believe in thy heart, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, bringing, um, calling upon him, confession, the confessing of um, your faith in believing in Jesus Christ is a sign of your um, uh, the, the Lord's righteousness believe it, be, being believed so it's accounted unto you for righteousness you're justified through your faith in the righteousness of God and so the Lord's and inclusive of there is God's purpose for Israel and them going to like in the in the time of the Lord's Gospel, like religion today, they're going to establish their own righteousness and they're not believing in the righteousness of God. Well, I'm just going to close with um, Romans 5 because it's getting on into a long one. Uh, Romans chapter 5, this is um, just a briefly about how the law convicts sin and that no one can keep the law, that Christ is the author of the law, completed the law, establishes the law by love, and that we receive that love within the heart through faith. And now that the uh, the need for uh, the temple sacrifices and the covering of sins in the dispensation of uh, the Old Testament to make sacrifices is done away in Christ, who's offered himself as a sacrifice for sin once and forever. And so we're justified through faith, not through the deeds of the law. So we can't, no one can do good and justify themselves as being holy, as God is holy. So right, um, living a righteous life, choosing to live good works, doesn't make you righteous. It just shows that you know righteousness and you're trying to follow it and you're convicted by the, the author of that righteousness who no one can attain to keeping the law because you've got to keep the, the whole law whole of the time without wavering, without faulting no one can do that so the law convicts all the sin and that by the righteousness of God all may have the law born within their hearts through the grace and merit and the love and the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans chapter 5 Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace uh, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience experience hope and hope if make if not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would dare to die. But God command, commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin hath entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so it is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offences unto justification. 
For if by one man's offence death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the, the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offence of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound that as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto the etern eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So there we go. There's the uh, simple plan of salvation and the gospel to the Jew and to the Gentile. Uh, reaching out to anyone who's lost, anyone seeking salvation, uh, to Israel, to the people of Israel, to the Jews to people of organised religion that they may come out of those systems and just simply receive Jesus Christ and what he paid and what many people have as a, in, in this testimony have uh, sacrificed their time, their lives and their, you know, within the Lord's blood, within the Lord's mercy, within the Lord's life. Um, the Lord has graciously given all people life, all souls are precious. And he's given his life, he's give, given life and fearfully died that he may save all life. But all life, he's, he's given freely a choice. So no one is without excuse. Not now, not, not, not forever. And the, the law was given to Israel to show that none are righteous, there's only one righteous. And he is the uh, same today and yesterday and forever. And the only righteous one is the, the eternal the Lord and God and Saviour Jesus Christ in the Father. And that's the simplicity of the Gospel and the dispensation, the, the uh, semi-dispensation of the go one Gospel and the one purpose and one nature and one heart and one word, one way, one light, one rock one gospel, one baptism, one faith, one man, one saviour, one God, and that's Jesus Christ. And that's simply the gospel, and I'll close there in the precious holy name, the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.